Okay, so some section 13.2 is um, derivatives and integrals of um, vector functions. Okay, so this is actually pretty easy, but it's nice to, to establish that the derivative of a position function is tangent to a curve. So let me just show you what I mean here. Um, okay, so this is my curve. I'll call it R of T. Remember, the, it's a bunch of position vectors that change over time, and they trace out a curve. Okay. <clears throat> And what I want to do is just kind of pick two moments in time. So I think I'll pick a moment here. So this is going to be um, R of T, say. And then just a moment later, we're going to have an R of T plus H. Oops. OK. And so, um, you know, wherever R of T comes from, I'll have it come from some origin over here. So remember these are position vectors. So R of T is actually that vector. We usually think of it as a point, but if you're gonna think of, think of it as a position vector, um, then it starts at the origin, okay? And there's R of T plus H. Now the vector I'm really focused on is the one that connects them. Oops, let me do this uh, quick fix here. Okay, so this is R of T plus H right there. Okay, and the vector that I'm interested in is the displacement between them from one position to the other. So I'm gonna try and draw just like a little dude going like this. I hope that works out. It didn't work out. I'm going to try it again. That's it. Okay, so let me, I'm just going to do a little tweak here and there. This is good. All right, so the green curve here is going to be R of T plus H minus R of T. It goes from the end of one. It goes from the uh, end of the second one. Oh, okay, let me just say it. <laughs> this is, <laughs> okay, so this dude here is R of T plus H minus R of T. Now, I don't know how you want to denote that in your notes, but it's a little guy. So you're gonna to have to sort of squeeze it in somehow. And what we want to point out is that the, as H goes to zero, that R of T plus H minus R of H um, goes from a secant vector to a tangent vector. Okay, so note um, as, um, H approaches zero, R of T plus H minus R of T uh, changes from a secant um, to a tangent vector. And I'm going to say tangent displacement vector. Okay. So, and then, um, you know, so it's really critical that we get this notion that it's tangent to the curve.
and um, then just to find the derivative. So um, the definition for the derivative of R of T. Sort of what you'd expect it to be. R prime of T is um, equal to um, the limit as h goes to zero of r of t plus h minus r of t um, over h. like this, which if you want, um, the point is to say that this is a tangent to this R of T curve. Okay, and we may as well um, just knock down what we mean by this. Okay, so, sorry, question. So this is lim as t goes to zero of displacement. Divided by time, and that's a vector, displacement vector. Okay divided by time, okay? So uh, another way of saying this is this is the limit as t goes to zero of change in position. That's what displacement means. Divided by change in time. And of course, that's the definition of velocity. Okay, so the book doesn't call that a velocity vector until 13.4, I think. It might be, it's probably 13.3, but I don't, <laughs> we've got it all sitting here. So basically, um, um, we've got this curve, R of T, okay, for all T. And so if this is R of A, then the derivative um, is tangent to the curve and we'll call it r prime of a. It might also be worth noting um, that the magnitude of r prime um, so worth noting that that um, the magnitude of R prime of T is equal to the limit as T goes to uh, zero of the magnitude of displacement. divided by time. Which is just the limit as t goes to the magnitude of displacement. You got a word for that? It starts with a d. Just distance, right? Divided by time. So the length of a vector is a distance, right? So um, this is just speed. So, so the point is to say that um, V of T or R prime of T is velocity. Um, the magnitude of V of T, um, which is the magnitude of R prime of T, is just speed, and those are two different things. Speed is a scalar. 
where velocity is a vector. Okay. I'm not going to do much with velocities or speeds until they come up with the book, come up in the book. Um, just a, de a definition or two before I do an example. So there's a definition here that says um, R of T is differentiable. Um, at T, um, if the uh, limit um, for R prime exists. Okay. So that's what differentiable means. Um, there's another thing, the, the craziest thing is, so what we're just saying, um, if R is differentiable, then there's a velocity that you can compute, okay? We say R prime exists, it has a velocity, and the velocity could be zero. Vector, remember it's a vector. Okay, here's a question I want to define. Um, I, let's say I was this this was on the street and you've got a car. Let's say we're in a parking lot and there's no cars around. And I tell you to take your car. Here's your car, a super cool little car with wheels. Is a small car. Okay, and maybe some headlights. There you go. And you're just sitting inside with a smiley face on. Okay. And what I'm telling when I tell you to do is to drive down this curve, make a sharp point. Ooh, that's cool. Didn't mean to do that. And then go off. Like, oop. I just, I just want it to be normal sometimes to see if that works. There we go. I want you to make a sharp point like that in your car. How would you do that? You could go forward and then reverse. So you'd have to stop, right? and then put it in reverse. If you don't stop, it won't go well for you, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so um, what we're saying here is there's gonna have to be a point. So you're gonna go forward here, there. You're gonna have to stop here, and then you're have to gonna go in reverse for the rest of it. And you could actually trace out a path with a sharp point, but sharp points don't exist without stopping. Okay, that is for a curve to be differentiable. Okay, so when we say a curve is smooth, that can't happen. You can't stop. So that is to say, um, R of T is what we call smooth at T. First of all, you, there still has to be a velocity. If you're if you've stopped your velocity is zero, okay? So there has to be a velocity, but it can't be zero if the curve's gonna be smooth. Because if you stop, then you can do all kinds of crazy things. So R of T is smooth at T if R is differentiable at T and our prime of t is not zero. So the only way you can make it that sharp point is to have r prime be zero, and we're saying you can't do that. And as long as you don't stop, you won't be able to make a sharp point on a curve like that. And that'll that's enough to guarantee that the curve will be smooth. Professor, can you just go over that one more that one more time? I think yeah. it's hard to imagine what you like, okay, I do do it with your hand. I want you to draw a curve real quick and make a sharp point and tell me you didn't stop when you get to the sharp point. Yeah, you have to. You have to stop. Okay, now draw a curve where your hand never stops. Can you make a sharp point? No, it has to be round. 
Right. So if you can guarantee to me that R prime was never zero, that is to say your velocity was never zero, okay, but you always had a velocity, that's, right. that's, that's to say that R prime exists. That makes it differentiable. Okay. So you had a velocity, but it was never zero. I'm saying if you did that, you could never make a sharp point in your curve. You could come close, but it won't be sharp. It won't be perfectly sharp. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, okay. and then that's just a definition, by the way. There's, I don't need to prove that. It's just what, how we define the word smooth. You'll see the word smooth come up a lot. And they're always basically saying, yeah, there's no sharp points, but it used to just be smooth, just meant differentiable, but now it means smooth and the derivative is not zero. Okay. It's a little more complicated than it used to be. Now there, here's a theorem. Um, it's um, basically because um, limits distribute through vectors, We had a theorem in the previous section on this. Um, the derivative with respect to time of a vector function like this, x of t, y of t, z of t, because the limit, you know, a derivative is a limit, right? And in the last section, we said that the limit of a vector is a vector of limits. Now I'm saying a derivative of a vector is a vector of derivatives, okay? Just because the limits distribute. So here I would do this. Okay. Okay, so just a simple uh, little example. How are we doing for time? E15. Okay, so um, I'm going to give R, this will be a, a plane curve. So R of T is equal to cos T plus one, sine T plus one. Okay which you can think of as cos t sine t plus um, one, one. Okay, so this part here is just a circle. And here, this is shifted to, so the center is at one, one. So one right and one up, okay? And so our prime of t is easy enough. So you'll get negative sine t cos t, okay? Um, let's see. Um, uh, well, let's say I want you to um, draw the curve. and a velocity vector at um, t equals negative pi over three, like that. So the curve's easy enough, it's just a circle, but I have to shift it away from the origin. So it's a radius one and it's shifted out to one one. Something's funny about this. Let's see if I can fix this. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna try and find the center real quick here. Is that right now? How'd I do? One, one. Okay, so, okay, so, oh, I hear myself. I'm gonna try and find the center real quick. Okay, so that's my center. Okay, and then um, I have to do negative pi over three. So I think I'll do guidelines again. So here's my guideline, which would be like a, a horizontal axis. And then negative pi over, so that's pi over two. So pi over three might be right here. Okay, and then um, if I'm to draw R prime um, R prime at negative pi over three, um, so this would be um, negative sine at negative pi over three. And that would be cosine of negative pi over three. Like that. So this is gonna be, I think it's root three over two. And um, cosine of negative pi over three is cosine of pi over three, positive pi over three, so that's a half. I think there's a problem. I got, I'm looking for my mistake. Oh no, we're going clockwise, uh, my bad. I think we're all good. Okay, I also might note um, that um, the magnitude of R prime at uh, negative pi over three is one. So that's a unit vector. So basically I'm drawing a unit vector tangent to the curve. So let's see if I can pull this off here. I see the, a, a unit, um, just to give you guys a sense of scale here, um, this is one right there, and this is one right there. So that's gives us a sense of the scale of it. And so I'm just going to draw a tangent vector in here, and call it, and you know, basically say, okay, I did my job. Kind of thing. Okay, so, oops. Okay, so that right there is my R prime at negative pi over three. And it's tangent to the curve. That's the main thing to get out of that. Okay, any questions? Um, question, how do we know that R prime when it's at negative pi over three is a unit vector? Oh, I just, because it's, I mean, if you just look at this, this is the, <laughs> I mean, if you take the magnitude, those are just points on a unit circle. You follow me? Yes. Okay. Right. When you, that makes when sense. you learn trig, if you do that's like a sine square plus a cosine square that adds up to one. So that, that'll be a, a unit length. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I, I'm just using that and trying to save um, the trouble of doing a whole lot of computation here. Mm. There's a whole list of properties. Um, 
how are we doing for time? 8.22. I think I'd like to squeeze in another example here. And I'm going to do it on that helix that we drew, we drew before. So um, back um, to R of T uh, equals 1 over pi um, T cos T sine T. Okay, so that's our uh, helix um, from prior example. Um, then our prime of T simple. So we'll just do one over pi, which is pretty small. Uh, negative sine t and cos t, like that. And let's just do, um, let's, uh, let's uh, draw the tangent at pi over 4, tangent vector. Okay, so first of all, r prime at pi over four. So this is going to be one over pi. Um, negative sine pi over four and cosine pi over four. Okay. So negative root. 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. I don't think this one's a unit vector anymore. It would be a unit vector if we were just going in a circle, but adding some speed in the x direction to make it a helix adds, um, it increases the velocity of the vector. It's going faster than it would if it was just going around a circle. Okay, so. Um, Let's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, you're gonna hate me, but I'm gonna copy that helix from what we did before. So forgive me while I insult you. Not that one, this one. And the crazy thing is, you guys, I'm just, I'm not gonna try and figure out anything. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna draw, you know, I'm trying to try and figure out where my point is that I'm referencing here. So here, you know, this is t equals zero right there. And right here is t equals pi over two from our prior computations. So I'm assuming, you know, somewhere in between there, right there. I'm going to have t equals pi over 4. You follow me? And then I just need to do a tangent vector there. Okay. I think I'm going to make some of these um, arcs a little thinner, just to, uh, real quick. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, so all I want to do is just add that uh, unit vector. I'm sorry, it's not a unit vector, but just a tangent vector in there. And if you want to know how long it is, it's a little bit more than I want to do. But um, this point right here was one zero. Nope, zero one zero. So you can see roughly the idea of how big a, a unit is in that. And so um, 
I think I can just go ahead and freehand this. I'll do it in a different color and a super thick vector. I think I'll do it and move it in position. I'm going to shrink it down a lot, so don't panic. Okay, and maybe I'll get rid of some of this other stuff I've added. It's too much to look at. So that is my R prime at pi over four. Oops. Just that little vector there. Okay, so it's not, it's not really exciting. <laughs> That's all we're doing. Um, there's a bunch of properties. We've got seven minutes. So let's do a, um, a property marathon real quick. And um, this is just a, it's just a theorem. And basically, it's just all the product rules you could possibly imagine. Because if you think about it, our vectors are now functions. And now with, with vectors, you have three different products, right? The dot product, the cross product, and the scalar product. And every one of them gets a product rule. <laughs> Okay, um, most of the other rules are sort of obvious, but you know, let me just go through the, the, the little blitz that I'm gonna do to you here. So, uh, when, and let me just, before I, I start the blitz, uh, I'll just say, when I say you, let's save ourselves some time. When I say you, I mean U of T and so on, okay? So V is V of T. Um, and I think, do I need a W? I don't see a W. Um, maybe, no, nah, I don't think I need any more now. Okay, so the derivative with respect to time of U plus or minus V is going to be U prime plus or minus V prime. So sort of obvious, right? Um, and then scalars constant scalars, I should say. So C times U is going to be C times the derivative of U. Okay, and then I think I'll squeeze a third here. How many are there? There's six all together. So three. Um, so this is where it gets interesting now. So this is a derivative with respect to time. Okay, first is the scalar product. So I'm going to have an F of T times u, that's a scalar times a vector function. Okay, I could say of t just to emphasize that, but so what you're gonna have to do is just exactly the dot product you would have imagined. You would have done f prime of t u plus, and it's a vector plus e, um, f of t u prime. Just, just exactly what you'd guess. Okay, is there any question about that? You can prove all this. I mean, none of this is magic. Um, and I think you will prove some of it. And I'll just let you guys ask me homework questions if something comes up and you're like, what do I do with that? I'm happy to help. But it's just none of these, the proofs are sort of just grunt work and they're not that hard, except for the cross product. Everything's hard with cross products. Okay, so first the dot, next is the dot product. So I'll just say u dot v. Okay, and it does, it's well behaved. So it's u prime dot v plus u dot v prime. And the order does not matter on that, but it does with the cross product. So here, d over dt of um, u cross v, and it behaves nicely just like you want it to. So you're going to get a u prime cross v plus a u cross v prime, and do not be tempted to write v prime cross u on that second one. The order matters. There's no way to turn that around. Now, the sixth one is 
lovely. It's a chain rule, which allows you to put functions inside of functions. Now these vector functions have scalar input. So theoretically you could substitute a, a scalar function into the scalar input of the vector function. So which is to say you could do D over DT of U of a scalar function f of t. And what's it do? Exactly what you want it to do. So that's the best part about all this. You know, it's the, all of these things I think you would have predicted. Um, so it's great. So you're going to do an u prime of f of t times f prime of t. OK. And um, so there's all that. Let's, let's do a 7. They, they, uh, they, they put this in as a definition, but I'm just going to squeeze it in this list. Um, so 7 doesn't really belong here. But it says this. You will never do this. Now, look, I know I haven't taken every math class or physics class or engineering class. The ones I have taken, I have never done what I'm about to write down. So I don't know why it's in the book, other than they feel like, well, we should put it in the book. Is it math? Yes. An integral, sorry, an integral of a vector. We will put vectors in integrals, but not like this. Maybe this just says, okay, you could, if you wanted to. Oops, I blew it. Not like that. An integral of a vector is a vector of integrals. Okay, so that's just a load of rules, things that are sort of obvious, but I wanted them in the notes. So let's leave it alone. Now, that's really, there's not much else to say about this section. Um, there's some homework problems, and I know you may beat your head over the wall or against the wall on some of it, so feel free to ask when the time comes. I hope you